Hey there, rednecks, preppies, redneck preppies. It's me, the redneck preppy. How you doing today? Great, good. The most recent videos that I've made on survival skills and equipment seem to swing a little more to the tech side than I prefer. Now, I've been wary of integrating powered technology into my survival gear, but somehow I made several videos mentioning sports watches with GPS mapping, for example, while allowing me to compensate and swing wildly in the other direction and discuss one of the least technical ways to keep track of distance traveled. I'm sure you've seen these in the past. They're called ranger beads or pace counting beads, according to your preference. Now, as the latter name suggests, these will allow you to count the number of paces that you take or track distance traveled. Now, we know that there is a long tradition of using pace counting in navigation. We know, for example, that the Roman legionaries employed the technique, and today you shouldn't be too surprised to learn that many militaries continue to make use of it, including, perhaps not surprisingly, the US Army Rangers. Now, if it's not obvious why this would be useful, I'll allow a simple example. Let's say you're navigating using your trusty map and compass. You plot a course between two points and note that your destination is approximately two kilometers away. By keeping track of how much distance you've covered, you can get a sense of whether you're nearing your destination or you've obviously passed it and need to correct. As you can see, it's a fairly simple device that's uh, composed of a length of paracord, 14 beads divided by knots, into two sections of four and nine. Now, how do you use this contraption? It's a simple device, it's simple operation. You can use this in one of two ways, to count the number of paces that you take or the distance that you've walked. Let's start with counting paces. The first thing is, before you even start, you should have a good idea of how much you cover with a single pace. Traditionally, we consider a pace to be about 30 inches or 76 centimeters. So you want to measure one of your natural paces to get a rough idea of your approximate number. Now, make sure that you start out with all the beads at the top of their section. It's meant to hang from this end, from your gear, your clothing, whatever. While you're walking, for every set number of paces that you take, you will pull down one of the beads in the lower section. Now, most people pull a bead down for every 10 paces. You could go with what you prefer. I do think, however, that 10 works the best. So as you walk, for every 10 paces you take, you're pulling down one bead. Once you have all nine beads pulled down, you've obviously taken 90 paces. At the 100th pace, you'll return all of these beads up and pull down one of the upper beads. Now you continue this cycle until all four of the upper beads and all nine of the lower beads have been pulled down. And once you reach the hundredth pace on that last cycle, you've covered 500 paces. And you reset and you start again. You will, of course, need to keep track of how many sets of 500 paces that you've covered. So let's say that you are covering ground from position A to position B. You know that you have a pace that averages about 32 inches. Simple math tells you that it therefore takes 1,980 paces to cover a mile. If you like metric, that means your pace is 81.28 centimeters and therefore 1,230 paces will cover a kilometer. It took you 2,300 paces to cover from A to B. That means, using a very quick and easy calculation, you've walked 1.16 miles. Pretty easy. Now, the second way to use a pace counter is to calculate your distance covered. The pace counter is used mechanically in the same way, except you're pulling a bead down for a distance that you've covered be it yards or meters. Now, tracking distance with a pace counter works best with metric systems, however, since you're effectively using a 10 base system here. So for every 100 meters that you walk, you pull down a bead. Eventually, you're going to reach 500 meters and begin again. 
remembering, of course, to keep a count of how many 500 meter increments you've covered. For this to work, of course, you need to know how many paces you take in 100 meters. In our earlier example, we used 32 inches or 81.28 centimeters for a pace. So for that person, it would be 123 paces per 100 meters. Okay, so there is a potential issue with using a pace counter. Your pace is going to vary depending on the terrain. It's relatively easy to maintain a reasonably consistent pace length on level terrain, more difficult on rough terrain or when covering rising and falling elevations. So you're likely going to have to adapt your count depending on the terrain you're covering and factor that into your calculation. Fatigue may also play a role. As you grow more tired, your paces will likely become shorter. Now at this point, you might be saying to yourself, nice trick preppy, but why do I care? I got a map, I got a compass, I can pretty easily figure out where I am and how far I have left to travel. That's not always true though. You might be traveling through terrain that doesn't have much in the way of features that you can fix your position with, or bad weather may be obscuring those features. You might even be traveling at night. By being able to estimate distance traveled, you can effectively plot a course on your map, determine its distance, and then have a good idea of how long and how many paces it will take you, allowing you to essentially navigate blind. And as I learned in basic training many years ago, it's not particularly difficult to teach someone how to walk in a specific direction. What's difficult for a lot of people, however, is estimating distance. And yes, your wilderness GPS unit makes maps, compasses, and, well, ranger bands, quaint reminders of a past when people actually have to rely on skill to accomplish outdoor navigation. I sure hope nothing happens to it while you're out there. Now, if you want one of these two ways, if you can get your hands on 13 beads and about 60 inches of paracord, you can make one. In the description, I've linked to a web page that shows you how. Now, if you aren't the arts and crafts type, you can buy them at plenty of places online. Give one a try sometime. You might find it pretty useful. I mean, if it works for the Rangers and the SAS, among many others, there might be something to it. At any rate, I hope you found today's video at least be vaguely entertaining and mildly informative. As always, I hope your adventures in the great outdoors are always safe and fulfilling. Take care and bye-bye.